Hey everybody, Morbtron here. Today I am talking about Warmind Bunkers and leveling them up quickly and efficiently. Now before I get into that though, I do have to say that this video is being recorded uh, day two of Season of the Worthy. So if the n other two bunkers uh, are leveled up differently, I will make a special video for those each. But I really doubt it as uh, I doubt Bungie took the time to make the bunkers level up differently. They're going to look different, I hope. Uh, but as far as leveling them up, should be about the same. Now, the first thing you need to know is that story and quest progression and even the bunker upgrade progression is shared between all three of your characters. So, you can pool your resources and upgrade your bunker actually pretty damn quick. Uh, it's actually not as grindy as I originally had thought. I made a pretty big mistake on day one and stayed only on my Titan. So I completed the daily bounties and then was just grinding out these additional repeatable bounties. That's not what you want to do. If you're looking to farm for Warmind bits as quickly as possible, but also efficiently, you should do your daily bounties on all three of your characters and then honestly just go do something else. Um, do power whore rewards, pinnacle rewards, that sort of thing. Grinding out repeatable bounties does not net you that many Warmind bits, comparing them to the weekly and daily bounties, where it's basically going to be a waste of your time. Now, at the end of the week, if you're completely out of other stuff to do, by all means, if you want Warmind bits, grind them out. But it's really, really not worth it to just sit there and grind when there's other stuff to do in the game. Now, once you get to integration level 3, which again is shared across all three of your characters, you're going to be able to purchase the weapon frame from the bunker. From the EDZ, it's the auto rifle, and I'll be making a video reviewing that auto rifle going live tomorrow. So keep your eyes open for that one. But as far as purchasing upgrades goes to actually upgrade the bunker, the first one you're forced to purchase is Valkyrie Spawner Tier 1, and after that, I would recommend going down the line of cost reduction of upgrades. Now, I also had a misconception that you needed to purchase every single upgrade in rank 1 before moving on to rank 2. That is not the case. The only thing you need to do if you want to purchase, let's say, cost reduction tier 3, is you need to have cost reduction tier 1 and tier 2 unlocked before you can purchase 3. So if you see here, I can purchase Rasputin Heavy Frame Spawner Tier 3 because I have Tier 2 unlocked, but I cannot purchase Valkyrie Spawner Tier 3 because I do not have Tier 2 unlocked, but I can purchase Tier 2 because I have Tier 1. So in purchasing these upgrades gives you the tokens to turn into Rasputin himself to upgrade your integration level, and the more expensive the upgrade purchased, or Rank 1, Rank 2, Rank 3, gives you more of those tokens. Rank 1 gives you one token, Tier 2 gives you two, and Tier 3, I believe, gives you three, but don't don't quote me on that. It's just, again, more as the cost goes up. So, the cost reduction Tier 1 reduces the cost of bunker upgrades for the first time. And just to give an example, it reduces the cost of the Tier 1 upgrades by 15. The tier 3 reduction reduces the cost even more than that, obviously. With the tier 1 cost reduction purchased, the tier or the rank 3 upgrades cost 300 Warmind bits. And with cost reduction tier 3 purchased, they only cost 240. So a lot of savings going forward there, meaning that it's not going to cost you nearly as much to fully upgrade your bunker. Now, as, what to, as far as what to hold off on, as far as the final thing you purchase because you do need to uh, fully upgrade and purchase everything about your upgrades uh, to complete triumphs and fully upgrade the bunker, that sort of thing. And that would be the resource auto collection. So the first tier costs 10 Dusklight shards to purchase. And I have gotten two Dusklight shards from the auto collector. So I'm still at a negative eight there. I'm eight in the red as far as this upgrade goes. One visit to the spider, if he's selling Dusklight Shards, will net you many, many more planetary materials. So, unless they get rid of spider, mm, these things are going to be pretty useless. But, again, 
If you want the Triumph and you want to fully upgrade your bunkers, you're going to need to purchase these at some point in time, but I would definitely hold off on them until last because literally anything else is better. Speaking of literally anything else that could be better, the next thing that I would purchase after doing a cost reduction tree would be the Warmind Bit Generation tier. Um, so the first one is just you get additional bits for clearing the bunkers, which you'd have to do daily. Now, Tier 2 gives you an additional two extra Warmind bits per repeatable bounty turn in, so at the end of the week, if you are grinding those things out, it'll give you a few extra bits per bounty. Not that big of a deal, uh, but probably worth purchasing in the long run. And Warmind Bit Generation Tier 3, which is way better than Tier 2, but again, you need to purchase Tier 2 to unlock the ability to purchase Tier 3. Once you're doing any matchmade activity like Strikes, Crucible matches, Gambit, whatever, you have a chance to get Warmind Bits at the end of the activity. So, passive bit generation, even though it's a chance, is still better than having to just grind out additional bounties. So, like I said earlier, do your daily bounties in all three of your characters. You'll maybe purchase a full set of additional bounties while you're doing these daily bounties. But beyond that, it's really not worth grinding unless you completely run out of stuff to do throughout the week. These things on the bottom, you do have to click on them to activate them once your integration level levels up. So once I get to four, I will actually have to click on Seraph Tower gear upgrade in order to actually get that bonus. But it's free, doesn't cost anything to turn on the upgrade. Now, when talking about the public event down here in the Winding Cove, and there's one on the Mar on the Moon, and the one on Io as well, they are a good place to grind out the additional bounties if you are going to do them because a successful completion of them does net you six Warmind bits. But unless you have a weekly bounty like we do this week to open four of the caches at the end of a successful completion of the um, public event, they're not really, not really worth grinding out because, again, you only get six Warmind bits. Well, this isn't loading correctly interesting <laughs> anyway um you only get six warmind bits per successful completion of the thing so it's really really not worth it oh, look it's it's uh auto starting with just me that'll be that'll be fun oh never mind we're getting booted <laughs> error code beaver so that's gonna be the end of this video it was the end of my video anyway so that's fine um, if you found this guide helpful in any way, definitely hit the like button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. If you are new here, subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But do not forget to have a good day, everybody. And I will catch you all next time.